This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Pounds versus Gibson. Ms. Pounds, you all have been dating, but you say you have invested time, energy, your emotions, and maybe most importantly, your money in this relationship, and you believe he's cheating and you think your investment is not worth anything. Tell us why you opened this case. I think what this was was a bad investment. Okay. Mr. Gibson was living in another state. Okay. And we met online. And we clicked, just like best friends. Like, we knew each other forever. We talked every day for months, for hours. It was like feelings developed, and he started to say he wanted to be with me. Okay. So, I paid for him to come from another state to be with me because he didn't like where he was and he wanted a fresh start with me. When he said that, and I knew things about him through conversation. Right. He liked fish and he liked hunting. I said, I can save money at the grocery store. I'll <laughs> never go hungry if I get with him. So I gave him a chance. All right, yeah. Mr. Gibson, she's accusing you of cheating. What do you think about that? Hey, Yon, I'm here to uh, prove my innocence. Okay. I have not been cheating on this lady. Okay. I know for price, history, or not, I had pictures or whatnot in my phone, but I need to get a award because I'm here to prove my innocence today. Have you tried to convince her that you have not been cheating? Yes, plenty of times. Yes. I had to tell her, hey, because the pictures or whatnot don't mean I'm cheating. I, hey, those in the past. Hey, let's go forward. Miss <laughs> Pounds, yes. since you opened this case, why do you think he's cheating? Really? Your, your courtroom don't have enough time for me to tell you all the reasons. <laughs> That's the truth. Wow. But okay. Mr. Gibson will get up in the morning, his phone will ring. He'll look at the phone. They don't answer it. So one morning I got off work. I look at the phone. I see a woman name. Mm-hmm. That's my, my family member. I said, call her, let me talk to her since she your family member. He picked up the phone and just started talking. He never called anybody. <laughs> he said this. He said, now, the name is on the phone. He called and acted like somebody else. He said, hey, where's, she, where's my family member? Well, tell her, call me back. And put the phone down, never call nobody. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gibson. Gibson. Did you do that? Did you really, did you really put a phone up to your head and start talking no, without even no, dialing or pushing a button or anything? <laughs> no, no, sir. What happened? It's my, it's my family member. She just moved from Indiana. She had never met anyone on my father's side. No one. And other than my father. I still haven't met her. But if I do let her meet her, she's still not going to believe it. And that's okay. But the fake phone call, though, I mean... There wasn't no fake phone call. <laughs> she was so... She be, she, when she get in that frantic, tantric mode, she don't pay attention or would not listen. I'm, I'm imagining this scenario, and I know I keep, keep talking about this, but I'm just trying to imagine this scenario. Okay, I'll show you. Hello? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did it. Is she there? Okay, now nah, tell her call her back. See, told you. <laughs> that, that is just what he do. That's not true. Yeah. And you're saying that didn't happen. When I pass this test, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna let her meet her. Okay. Well, I hope you get to pass this test. Well, I, know how, hey, I know I haven't cheated or anything. Right. Hey, that's the perfect me coming. Miss Pounds, have you observed anything else that make you think that Mr. Gibson is cheating? I ain't got enough time to tell you everything I observe, but I'm gonna tell you this. My phone started blowing up messages. Some woman said she was at my house with him. Oh. Said she'd been in my bed, said she'd been in my, in my house. She knew my name, first, middle. She knew certain things I had in my house. She knew I, what type of vehicle I drove. She knew what shift I worked. She told me when I go to work, he come to her. Let me ask you this. What did she say about Mr. Gibson? He has a nickname. He goes by the nickname Black. Mm. To me, I never call him that. That's some low stuff, Black. He tells everybody when you meet him, I'm Black. He don't go by his first name. I don't... Anybody who know me, know him, they him. All my friends know him by his first name. Okay. They, they don't even know him. Nobody associated with me calls him Black. So it would have to be somebody who he, he knows and is told to call him that. Yes. Mr. Gibson, Mr. Gibson, how does this woman know all of these details about Miss Powell gotta, and about you? It gotta be someone she know. 
Why? It got to be because, first of all, I'm not on social media, period. period. How do you explain, then, the level of detail that this woman messaged Miss Pounds with? I had the slightest idea, but I'm here to... A lot of tests go, go prove everything. Let me ask him this. Do you know this woman? No, I do not. You, you don't know anything about this woman? No, I do not. You've never met her? No. Never dated her? No. Didn't sleep with her? No. Haven't slept with her since you've been with her? No, I haven't slept with no one since I've been with her. This is crazy. Hey, the tests go prove it all. <sighs> Ms. Pounds, do you... You say you got a lot of reasons why you think he's cheating. Can you give me another one? Mm. I think text messages... Actually, it was one woman I called back, but it was women. These are text messages between this other woman and him? Yes. I had his phone. I was looking where they was talking, and I texted the woman. I said, this is his woman. I got his phone. Who are you? And she was like, wow. And I took the phone in there to him, but at that time, I took my phone and I had saved her number. I, I took the phone to him. He jumped out of the bed, ran to the bathroom. And the woman said, she don't know nothing about me. Yeah, I got, I got evidence right here. You All brought right. something with you? The okay. woman don't know nothing about me. He told her he's single, he lived by himself, got a nice job, nice truck. Oh, Ron, would no, you no, no, nothing about me. Yes, ma'am. None of the women know nothing about me. He's single. Thank you. He's single. That's yeah. what he tells him. <laughs> he ain't got no woman. Okay. Yeah, so this picture you sent, you're sending it to her saying, look, this is my man. We're in a relationship. Yeah, because she didn't know nothing about me. Didn't know anything about you. Mm -hmm. And she responds, okay, y'all, got, no got it. No pressure. Right. So who is this woman and why does she think she's, you're single? Well, at the time, yeah, I was still on, on the app browser. On what app? A dating app? Yeah, a dating app, yes. I know you think you answered my question. And you real good at avoiding the answer. I asked you, who is this woman and why does she think that you are single? Why does she think that? Unless you like, told it's her... because I didn't tell her I was single. It's probably because of we were chatting. So if then we were chatting, that means I must have been single to her. And that's a reasonable presumption for her to make right since you're on a dating app. Yeah. Right? But he's yeah. already said, I don't do social media. So why, how is he that on was, the dating was, that? That's that not really that's then. There ain't no reason to that, That's not reason to <laughs> Well, you know, we're interested too. Because there's her side, there's his side, and there's the other woman's side. And she is here today. Ron, would you please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to see you here. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. You too. Would you state your name, please, for the record? Latanya Smith. And Miss Smith, what is the nature of your relationship with Mr. Gibson? Um, I actually met him through POF, so we actually never established a relationship. Did he? ever expressed to you that he was in a relationship? Nope, he told me he was single. <laughs> he specifically told you he was single? Yep. So this wasn't a presumption that you made just because you were on a dating site? No, he told him he was single. Did you ever receive any photographs from him? Um, I did. Um, I received one where, um, he was standing by a truck or whatever and he was telling me that was his truck and I was just the truck. All right. Okay. All right, let's take a look. So this is a picture of a truck. This is the picture that he sent you saying, you know, this is my truck. Yeah. Okay. Well, can we... Ron, would you take this to Ms. Pounds? And would you look at it and tell us whether that's your truck or somebody else's truck? That's my truck. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Gibson, if you're in a relationship with Ms. Pounds, why are you telling Ms. Smith you single and that all that Ms. Pounds is paying for belongs to you? Ask Ms. Pounds why she... Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh. no, 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 no! Why would she tell... All right, go ahead. You about mm. to make me curse up in here. <laughs> now, I'm gonna ask you one more again, as my grandmother said. Why did you do what you did? Well, at that time, she was telling me to go sow my robes. Mm. Out of her mouth. She, she a witness. She right there. You know what? Mm. I'm gonna let you talk to her, Mr. Cullen. Ms. Pounds, you shaking your head. Did, did you tell him that? This is what happened. 
He want to go out to the club. I, I, we get dressed to go out. He be looking at women when we together. Mm. I seen it in it, and I told him, you are not ready. All this stuff that you doing, you're not ready to be in a relationship. You need to go be by yourself and get all that wildness out of you. Mm. That's what I told him. That he took it. Let me tell you. No, no. Let me tell you. He took it as if I told him to go do it while he with me. That's oh. what he took it as. <laughs> so, Miss Smith, let's just cut to the chase here. Okay. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. All right. Get on down to it. Did you have a sexual relationship with Mr. Gibson? No, we never had a sexual relationship. Never got that far. Uh, we only talked by phone for maybe about a week. Then the young lady actually called me of the day of that morning that he's actually supposed to... We supposed to meet up that evening. So you all made plans to meet up. Right. But when she called me, that nipped it in the bud for me. Well, I think we have... I know I have. Just go <laughs> on. <laughs> I, I'm, I just put a fork in me. I am done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> the court has done a complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call court expert Guy Wolf and licensed mm -hmm. certified polygraph examiner Dave Lawrence to determine is he cheating? <laughs> So, Mr. Wolf, you have more than a dozen years in investigation and more than 20 years in law enforcement. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. So, what did you do to investigate this case? So, before Mr. Gibson took his polygraph exam, I sent Mr. Gibson into a room with one of my colleagues. Wow. My colleagues posed as a litigant who was be being accused of using his phone to cheat on his girlfriend. Mr. Gibson loosened up with my colleague and began to start spilling the beans. He stated that he uses dating apps all the time and that he also was glad that the court did not summon his phone because he would have destroyed it. Hmm. So, did Mr. Gibson admit being intimate with any of these women that he's met online? He did, Your Honor. Mr. Gibson stated that he has had sex with women he has met on dating sites, but that he's not had sex with all of them. And since that... They had Mr. Gibson? Do. We talking about when mm -mm. we were together. I ain't got nothing to do with my past. So you're saying that the women that you met on the dating site that you slept with, that you confessed to, were before you were with Miss Powell? Yes, because I hadn't had no sexual intercourse with no woman since I've been with her. Well, we get ready to go to the lie detector. Yeah, exactly. They right there. We're about to find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mr. Lawrence, you are a certified polygraph examiner, correct? Yes, sir. And you administered a polygraph examination on Mr. Gibson, correct? Yes, correct. You sir. asked him a series of questions. I did. Right. You asked Mr. Gibson, since being in a relationship with Ms. Pounds, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than Ms. Pounds? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the polygraph determine? The lie detector determined he was being deceptive. <clears throat> Gibson? <laughs> I never had no sexual intercourse oh, with a woman. Liar, liar. You still denying it? Hey, I told, you... I told the truth. It was no. And I know I haven't. All right. <laughs> You asked Mr. Gibson, since being in a relationship with Ms. Pounds, have you had sexual intercourse with women whom you met on dating sites other than Ms. Pounds? What was his response? He said no. What did the polygraph determine? The lie detector determined he was being deceptive. Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, you got... Really? You scored a perfect 100. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this. Go ahead, love. I won't no. let you speak first, because... No, Miss Pounds, I mean, you kind of knew. He ain't never been no good since he got to me, so... It is. It is what it is. 
It is what it is. You can never speak to me or uh, never again. And you're done. Done. You're done. Finished. <laughs> Mr. Gibson, you've been set free. She's been set free, but you've been set free. But it comes at a price because you lost out on a good woman. Right. There was a woman who cared about you. I was all good about you. And then to play this game of, I don't know, you can stand there from here to tomorrow and beyond and say you didn't, but you right, did. No, I didn't. You did. You did. Right. Nah. Out. <laughs> I just, I can't. Out of my Because I can't even have Hello, Court is in recess, and today we're updating you on couples who vow to love one another until death do us part. But did all of the mayhem that came with allegations of cheating in their unions? In our first case, Sonia Collins' husband was an ordained minister, but she believed he was doing more than spreading the gospel with other women. After church, one of the ministers come up to me and say, ask your husband to stop calling my daughter phone after 10 o'clock at night. I say, what? I've tried to do everything right, and it's like it didn't work. Like the fiery darts was able to penetrate. One of my coworkers pulled me to the side one day. Oh, my uh, God. She's a stripper, mind you. And she say, your husband asked me to do a private dance for her. That's a lie. She was saying that the club that she was working at wasn't finished being remodeled or whatever. I said, well, maybe you need to do some private dances. I, uh, She's a stripper. No, I'm just trying to get my arms around an ordained minister telling a stripper, make some extra money for private dances. If it comes back that he's cheating, you're done. I'm done. I'm done. What were your initial findings? When Mr. Collins came into the room, he had an emotional breakdown. Wow. What did you conclude regarding infidelity during their marriage? He gave me no signs of deception. And so overall, I believe that Mr. Collins is being truthful and he has not cheated on his wife since they've been married. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collins was faithful during the marriage, but has the couple worked past their trust issues? They sent us this update. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cutler. How are you guys doing? It was great to be in you guys' courtroom. Since then, my wife has begun to listen to me a little bit more. But on the other hand, I did learn. Treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. And I want to thank you for that. Now I have one problem, and that problem is she has yet to take her test. And there's a lot of questions I want to answer too. Well, it sounds like they still have some work to do before they can fully trust one another. I'll say, and that reminds me of another case where a man didn't even trust his wife to cook him dinner. Ever since she lost 100 pounds, she started dressing provocatively, sneaking out that night, and putting stuff in my food. <laughs> Pork chops, I'm taking a nap. When I get out of work, chicken, I'm That's taking a nap. That's because he's tired. You know, this it got to be uh, South Peter. <laughs> You believe that she put salt peter in the food to take your libido down? Yes, <laughs> Is that all you have? I see negligee laying all on the couch and stuff. Oh okay. Okay, she's in the bathroom taking selfies. To this day, I'm still waiting on those pictures. Is no, this the maid outfit? Yeah, that's the maid outfit. <laughs> did you send these pictures to another man? No, I did not. But I also buy stuff for uh, him so I can sing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> at him. He's sexy. Oh, my God. Why would I want to cheat on somebody that looks like that, really? I'm from New York, and I have never seen a black cowboy before. And he <laughs> had on a cowboy hat. <laughs> if you find out she is cheating, the marriage is over. Uh, 25 years has gone down the drain. Gone Boy, down I the really... drain. You look a little nervous. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> I'm just upset about this, so I'm just... It's just bothering me. Have you had sexual intercourse with any man other than Mr. Williams? What was her response? She said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> so did this Texas couple get back in the saddle? They can tell you better than we can. Howdy, y'all. Now y'all, 
This is Tasha Nancy from Texas, and y'all, Texas size update. As you can see, me and Anthony are still together. And uh, she let me decide to be the man of the family sometimes. Because <laughs> I got a cowgirl. From now on, we decided we're going to go on date nights and oh, yes. go on trips. We've been together for 25 years, and we hope to be together 25 more, just like the couples. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they put the past behind them. And you know date night always puts a smile on my face. But in this next case, a date night led to marriage and mistrust, and they ended up right here. Uh-huh. She was on the sofa like this. All right. She's naked. I walk in. And what does she do? She covers herself up and closes the laptop. So what do you think she's doing? She said she was taking the modeling pictures, so she left the room. I open up the laptop, and it wasn't the camera background. It was actually a video chat background. And so you believe she was having a video chat with another man? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I was nude on the couch taking pictures. When you apply to a modeling job, you have to submit candid photos of yourself so that they can see what you look like to get hired for the paying job. Was Miss LeBeau building her modeling career or was she laying down a career as a video chat vixen? I can't call it. Stay tuned for an update on the LeBeaux and more cases of marriage mayhem when Couples Court continues. Welcome back. We're in the midst of another special update episode of Couples Court. Today, we're taking a look back at cases with couples who have entered one of the most challenging partnerships there is, marriage. Before the break, Ms. LeBeau's husband accused her of using her modeling career as a cover to cheat. But was he right? If she's cheating today, I, I have to just move on. It's make it or break it. Since you've been married, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your husband? No. Your Honor, the voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. We got together at a bar, so it, he can't really say anything. So, Casey, did the couple work through Ms. LeBeau's infidelity? Here's Mr. LeBeau with the answer. Well, when we got back home, we decided that, you know, it just wasn't fair for both of us just to keep going. But we have been doing counseling we're still best friends. I mean, let's face it, we have a, an amazing child together. Hopefully someday in the future, you know, we can, you know, reconcile and get our stuff back together for our son because he deserves it. Maybe someday we'll have a better update for y'all. I'm sorry to hear that the LeBeaux couldn't work it out, but it's great that they sought counseling and are working together for their son. I'm all for that, Mr. Cutler. But this next case really touched my heart. He, like I said, he doesn't come home at days, at weeks at a time. I mean, and blaming me for his, him not being able to go pro or complete his football dream. You work hard all your life for this. You plan, you had, you plan your step all the way up. I mean, I work extra hard. I work harder than anybody else on the field. I felt like it went to waste. I'm tired. I'm tired of the stress. I'm tired of my kids asking me where their dad is. I'm, it's hard on me to just sit here and pay all the bills. I'm sorry, baby, you know that. Miss Pruitt was worried that her former college football player husband had become a star player with other women. Miss Pruitt was heartbroken, but was her husband really scoring with other women? We'll bring you the answer in more cases of marriage mayhem when Couples Court continues. Welcome back to a special update edition of Couples Court, Marriage Mayhem. I'll be the first to tell you that having a successful marriage takes work. Yes, it does, but it's worth it. Before the break, a couple was on the brink of divorce after starting their family in college. Mr. Caitlin's dreams of playing professional football were crushed, and his wife suspected his suspicious behavior meant that he was cheating. When I was pulling up the um, text messages and the social media page, it had naked pictures back and forth, both of them. She's sending naked pictures to your husband, mm -hmm. and he sent naked pictures back to her? Yes. And you know him? Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Catlin. Listen, it's just nothing like that. We, we, she's a friend of another friend. That's how we met, okay? Okay, uh, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, 
It don't matter how you met. The question the naked is, pictures, why? I have no, I have no idea what that is. I don't but you know your husband I naked. Say, I say, I know pictures. him naked. I say the pictures. And when he pulled up in that van, his clothes was outside, and I was waiting for him. During your ten-year relationship, have you ever had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your wife? What was his response? Mr. Callum made an admission. He said yes. Tell your wife what you need to tell her. I was going through things at the time. I wanted to center her attention on me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I went and found her somewhere. When he was gone, I wasn't cheating. I worked. I worked my butt off for my family. I applaud Mr. Caitlin for finally owning up to his mistakes. Yeah. But has he changed his ways? His wife sent us this update. Me and Marcus, it wasn't going to work out. We decided to just part our ways. I think that's best for me and my kids. I've learned that I deserve better. So I thank you for everything you did for me. And I appreciate you. Mr. Cutler, it's unfortunate that Ms. Pruitt and Mr. Caitlin could not work it out but I hope they continue to co-parent peacefully and be a positive example for their children. Up next, the Wanlins were more than just partners in life. Like us, they were also partners at work. However, when money went missing, mm. their work relationship went out the window and Mayhem took over their marriage. I was going in our office to pay bills and money was missing, like 200 here, 300 there. There's no explanation for this money. So what do you think he was doing with the money? I don't know, I guess he was, I don't know if he was paying for somebody's apartment. I don't know if he was buying her jewelry. I don't know what he uh, was doing. No, money was not missing. I've never cheated on her. I gotta pay a server's tips at the end of the night. I gotta pay them in cash. He was standing at the door and a pretty young girl came walking around the corner and just I didn't walked think she was that pretty, him. Your Honor. And you think, okay, there's something going on right it looked there. Looked like she was there to either say, look, either me or her, or, <laughs> well, um, you know, whatever. And then she said, well, I'm here. I want to talk to the owner. The girl that approached was wearing a white shirt and black pants, which in New Orleans means you're a server. And so when she came up, I correctly assumed, I said, are you looking for a job? And she's like, yeah. Did she actually come to work at the restaurant? She said, no, she did not. Okay. Absolutely. All right, well, that was a good choice. You asked Mr. Wanlin, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Cheryl, in the four years you have been married? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Yeah. I was so happy Mr. Wanlin was telling the truth, but was it enough to repair their marriage? Let's see what they have to say about their current situation. Hey, y'all, um, just gonna provide a little update for you guys. Uh, it's all gravy baby here in New Orleans, uh, you know, being fully exonerated by the head of the FBI polygraph department. I guess I couldn't have been cleared by a higher source except God himself, so I'm really grateful for you guys and for what y'all do. Y'all just have a blast every day, Charles job, and you know, that was really an example to us, and we hope we can be that example to other people. So thank you for helping us get there. Thank you. That was so sweet. We appreciate it, and we are wishing you much happiness and much success. Well, in any partnership, there are rules of engagement. Rule number one for this next couple should have been do not have sex with another man in a car in front of your house. What? I go downstairs and I knock on the car and that's when I find my wife cheating with another guy. Wow. I was blankly, really, deliberately disrespecting him. Like, I'm not even really? gonna lie or try to cover it up. And that's the only way he paid attention to me. I have concerns if my daughter is mine. I just, I need to, I need to sleep at night. I need answers. So, when he took you back, what kind of promises did you make to him? Um, I promised him I would never sleep with nobody else. Miss Dixon was asked, when you returned home wearing no panties, did you have sexual intercourse with another man? What was Miss Dixon's response? She said no. What did the polygraph reveal? The polygraph determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. Thank you. That's only one. Thank you. That's only one. 
I can't believe Miss Dixon was telling the truth. I have to admit, I was utterly surprised. I agree, but that wasn't our last question. Catch the conclusion of this outrageous case and an update on where the two are now when Couples Court returns. Stay tuned. We're back for the conclusion of this special episode of Couples Court. Today, we're taking a look back at couples whose nuptial agreements may have become null and void after leaving our courtroom. The union between Mr. Hunt and Ms. Dixon dissolved into chaos after he caught her in a car in front of their home having sex with another man. Too much. The trust was gone out of their marriage, and Mr. Hunt also wanted to know if the other man could have fathered his wife's baby. Let's go to the results. Ms. Dixon was asked, other than the one time you admitted to cheating during your marriage, have you had physical sexual contact with any man other than your husband? What was her response? She said, no, Your Honor. Lie. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being Deceptive, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Dixon. Ms. Dixon. Do you have something you want to share? I haven't did anything. Well, the results indicate you were being deceptive when you answered that. Okay, Are you being deceptive know. now? No, I'm not. We can lead you to the water, but we can't make you drink it. Ms. Dixon was asked, could your youngest daughter be fathered by someone other than your husband? Your Honor, Ms. Dixon made it an admission and she said, yes. Mr. Hunt was crushed, but did he try once again to forgive and forget? Let's take a look. And my plans for the future, our future, is to grow closer as a family, to grow closer in our marriage, and to just move forward. And then I would like to thank the Cutlers. Thank you, Cutlers. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad that Mr. Hunt and Ms. Dixon recognized that they had to fix their own issues before they could learn to truly open up to one another. Correct. We're wishing you and your family the very best. You all have known each other for 10 years, and you've been in a committed relationship for three years. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Johnson, you brought your boyfriend here to court today because you believe he's cheating on you. But before I get to that, I want to know, how did you guys meet? Your Honor, we met on a hookup site. It was casual, and we hooked up. Right. So how did you two go from hooking up to a steady relationship? We kept coming back to each other. So we were like, well, we keep coming back to each other, so there's a reason there. Maybe we should try a serious relationship. I mean, Mr. Rose, I don't know very much about hookup sites. Well... <laughs> I don't know very much about hookup sites, <laughs> but from what I understand, you know, the purpose is not really to be in a relationship. So what yeah. was it about this lady that you go for the purpose of just hooking up, but you stay with her? Well, what's, first of all, her character. Her character makes a person, and she got good character. And she plays a good role with being a mother to my daughter. Ms. Johnson, what was it about Mr. Rose that made you say, okay, let's move this to the next level? Well, he was the first man that came into my life and made me feel loved. And he was always there to support me. So that made me love him even more. How do we go from that man to a man you think is hooking up with other women? Well, Your Honor, the first incident... Um, he had a family reunion, and I was invited to meet the rest of his family. I had already met his mother and father, and we were on the way to the reunion, and I was looking for a CD in the middle console, and I found a pack of condoms. They were my condoms. And one condom was missing. No. One condom was missing, yes. Were you all using condoms? No, we don't use condoms. So that's why I was pissed that when I found them, the condoms. All right. Okay. All, right. all right. Thank you, ma'am. All right, all Mr. Rose. All right. <laughs> Tell me all about it. <laughs> the condom is a dick. Okay. <laughs> One of my, my hustles I do, I'm a photographer. So I always be out. My family member goes with me for security. So this particular night when she found the condoms in there, 
he was with me that night. He met a female in the club. Can I use your keys in your car? Yes, you can. Why well, they just come back and pick me up? So he came back and picked me up. I dropped him off. I didn't. I didn't look in there. I didn't see him in there because I would have saw him and I'm like, hey, you, you left your condoms in here, man. You know, don't get me in trouble. <laughs> you know, I would said that. But but it does explain why a family member needs to store condoms in your car. Well, right. He doesn't have a vehicle, so I let hmm. him use my vehicle to do what he had to go do. So he ended up leaving me at the party and coming back to pick me up. He took your car. Yes. Hooked up with some female. Yes. And left the condoms in your car. Yes. So that's your story. And you, Miss Johnson, are like, nah, I'm not nah. believing it. They so actually, this is turning into the case of the case of the missing condom. Right. Where that missing condom is. All right. Where is it? All right. <laughs> Do you have any other reasons to believe yes, that Mr. Ross is cheating? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, she said it like, yes. Yes, yes Wait Your till Honor. you hear this. All right, bring it. Well, Your Honor, I was going through Ron's phone one day. He left it. He went to the store. He left his phone. So I took the opportunity to go through it. And um, I went to the text messages first. Nothing in the text messages. Okay. Went to Facebook Messenger. Uh-oh. Set it off on there. Okay. okay. Went to the Facebook Messenger, looking through all the messages. He talking to different females, and this one female I never seen him talk to her before, cause I went through his phone before. I didn't seen all the other females, but this female is new. So I clicked on it, and I'm looking, and I see a video oh. of me and Ron having sex. Oh. So he sent porn to another woman. That's like invasion of my privacy oh, my because God. she could send it to somebody else. Right. right. And I don't even know this woman. Why are you sending private, intimate moments with your girlfriend to oh. some other woman? We asked, we was talking about doing a threesome. Oh. So that's how that came about with the video coming up in there because in the beginning, the text message, it was me and her texting. So the girl asked me, say, would, you, would you send a video of you and your girl? So I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I don't mind doing but that. But he didn't... So he that didn't, was like an audition tape? He didn't put me... <laughs> <laughs> she oh, sent videos back. Cutler, did you just say an audition tape? <laughs> yeah. That's what he said. There was conversation going back with him and this other woman. They're talking about having a threesome. You know, well, what do you want to do? Well, I like... Well, send me a tape. <laughs> if that doesn't sound exactly. like an audition that's tape, how, I don't know exactly Honor, what's going on. Your just like But, that. Your Honor, she sent videos back. See? She's... Of her? Yeah. Yes, of her. So y'all are exchanging... Bad. Audition tapes. <laughs> <laughs> audition they were tapes. just exchanging videos of each other. Do you believe he's already hooked up with this young lady? Yes, I do believe it. So it went from audition tape to actual audition. No, yes, no, nah, nah, it didn't make it that far. That's what I think, Your Honor. Honor. And I think different. That didn't, it didn't happen. So the so, only thing you did was exchange tapes. Yeah, just sex and that's it. That's all. That's all. That's... And you've never been with this woman? Never been with this woman. Never been with this woman. Did you get her permission to distribute that tape before you sent it out? No, nah, honestly, no, I didn't. Tell me that's all you got. No, Your Honor, I have another story. He did something else. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Okay, hold up. That's a day you don't want to mess up on. That's just... It's, you, a, it's 364 that, days that you can just really just go down in flames. Thank but, you. That's the one day... And there are two of them. What's oh. the other one? Do you know the other one? <laughs> you put me on the spot. Yes. <laughs> Your birthday. There it is. Don't mess up my birthday and okay. don't mess up Valentine's Day. Yes, right. Your Honor. Yeah. So, okay. So, what happened on Valentine's Day? Yeah. Okay, we All went right. to a nice hotel on Valentine's Day, and um, I, it had a kitchenette in there, so I cooked a crawfish boil. That's what I'm talking we about. We love to eat seafood, so I thought that would be something romantic for us to, you know, cook and have a romantic dinner at this expensive hotel. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, rose pebbles, everything's on the floor, on the bed. You get ready to set it off. Yes, Your Honor, I wanted it to be special because this was the first time I ever did anything with a man on Valentine's Day, something oh. like this, because I wanted to do it with him because he was special to me. So 
Ron got a phone call from somebody. He said that he had to go and handle something. So, okay, I let him go. What time did he get back? He didn't get back to the room until 3 a.m. Mr... Mr. Rose, Mr. Rose, Mr. Rose. (laughs) Yes. Of all the days to disappear, you picked Valentine's Day to go out and stay out till 3 in the morning. Yes, I did. I chose that. It was a choice made to better my family, my daughter, than money situation-wise. So are you saying you had a photography gig on Valentine's Day? No, I went with my cousin. He's a truck driver, so his loader canceled on him at the last minute. And he like, cuz, could you come and help me unload this truck? I'll pay you, you know? I'm like, okay. I'm like, man, I need this money. You can't just roll up and roll out and be gone till 3 a.m. Did you were calling Money aside. Me? I haven't heard nothing. I've been calling, texting, no answer, no response. Why did you like... take her calls? Well... Nothing to say. <laughs> I, I gotta say, it doesn't feel like you were trucking. <laughs> what is at stake here? If you should find out that Mr. Rose is cheating, what happens next? What's at stake is me and his daughter's relationship. Her biological mother has passed on, and I've been there, and I've been a mother figure to her, and I don't want to let that go because, you know, she's like mine. All right. Okay. To get to the bottom of this, this court has ordered a full forensic data investigation on Mr. Rose, and we have those results. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Greg Evans into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Hello, Your Honors. Mr. Evans, how are you? I'm doing great in yourself. Would you explain what you do, please? I do cybercrime investigations, including forensics and social media investigations. So, in this case... Yes. What did you do? We did a full forensics um, investigation and social media investigation of Mr. Rose's cell phone and his social media accounts. All right. Ms. Johnson says Mr. Rose communicates primarily through his social media applications. Did you uncover anything of note? (laughs) Did I? Hmm. (laughs) I Me found too. several things. It's clear that he was soliciting more than a casual conversation or a friendship. So it says, me and my girl want to party with you. What's up? Was this a reach out for I another know. threesome? You see what it say, me and my girl? But I ain't no name back then. So I thought you were doing this with her permission. You were out looking for, you know, a, a hookup. Yes. I text people to get, to get answers from them, like, see, do they want to do it? You but know? we're supposed okay. to do this together. Okay. Did you find anything else on Mr. Rose's phone? Oh, I can keep going. Oh. <laughs> I, also, I also uncovered a conversation where Mr. Rose solicited another woman asking for a sexy photograph. All right, this is from Mr. Rose. It says, can I have a booty picture? 1.16 in the morning. I'm sleeping. And then it looks like about a half hour later at 1.47 in the morning, Mr. Rose writes, hello? Hmm. Like, <laughs> like he hasn't gotten the picture yet. <laughs> so he you, you were really picture. wanting this booty picture, weren't you? Yeah, he wanted Yeah, I wanted that picture, though. That went for no nah, three. but that, but, uh... So at 1.16 a.m., you just sending out this kind of messaging. It's just, what they call it, sexting? That's what they call it? <laughs> All right. Did you discover anything else in your investigation? Oh, yes, you did. Oh. Even though it appears that Mr. Rose tried to get slick and block my investigation by changing his settings on his phones to certain apps so I couldn't get to him, (laughs) but I did, um, I found that he had been exchanging uh, explicit videos with another woman who is not the plaintiff. And I'd like to show you those videos. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Well, e- explicit is definitely the word for it. Uh, this is a very, very close-up shot of a woman's private areas. Mr. Rose, who's this woman that you're having this, this intimate connection with? Well, there's no one I'm having sex with. It's just online. That's it. So you still contend that you haven't cheated? Oh, um, yes. I mean, yes. even though we have the condoms, even though we have you disappearing on Valentine's Day, 
even though you've got all these videos and things on your phone that you're exchanging with these other women, you still contend that you're not cheating. Yes, I'm content that I'm not cheating. All right. Well, to further investigate this matter, the court ordered a forensic voice analysis of the defendant. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Guy Wolf into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, how are you? I'm well, Your Honor. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Great. Could you explain what you do and how you use forensic voice analysis? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've been a forensic voice analyst for a little over 10 years now and performed hundreds of exams. And what we do is we record or measure the frequencies in the spoken word and the voice. Whenever those frequencies are deviated from, then it, it's an indicator of deception. And that's how we're able to tell whether somebody's being truthful or whether they're lying. All right. Let's take a look at the first question that was asked. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with the woman with whom Rakita caught you trading pornographic pictures? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. I see a little bit of a smile, Ms. Johnson. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's see the next question, please. When you disappeared from the hotel room last Valentine's Day, did you meet up with another woman for physical sexual contact? No. Mr. Wolf, what did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Wait! Oh. No, that's not, that's <laughs> not true. That's not true. <laughs> Who was the woman that you were with? It wasn't a woman. I wasn't with nobody on Valentine's Day. Mr. Wolf, let's take a look at the next question you asked Mr. Rose. Have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Rakita since 2014? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mr. Rose, who have you been with since you all started dating in 2014? No one, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Johnson, would you please share with Mr. Rose what you're thinking and feeling right now. I just feel hurt. I, I really feel hurt. I feel like you could have told me, you could have been honest with me. You love me, you would stop doing everything that you're doing and just be with me. Uh, I'm with you. I love you. I'm with you. Okay, your actions need to speak that too. Mr. Rose, if you spend as much energy focusing on Ms. Johnson as you spent trying to find someone who's a suitable person for a threesome, you probably wouldn't be in our courtroom right now. 